Hello, I'm Kate, the self-love warrior. <laughs> and I'm Sarah, the mumpreneur. And here we are introducing an online prosperity show. We're here today to talk to you about self-love and we can't wait to share everything with you. We're excited! <laughs> Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the mompreneur, Sarah Clack, and the self-love warrior, Kate. How are you ladies doing today? Awesome. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for having us. Fantastic. We're now, excited. <laughs> great stuff. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you're watching this show right now, you would understand we're always bringing in experts within their own realm that will talk about all subjects pertaining to relationships, pertaining to business, and how you can actually have a happier existence. Now, today we're talking about self-love. A lot of us might not know what it is all about. It is a way of relating to yourself that does not actually involve you harshly judging or punishing yourself for every mistake that you make. Now, as a business person, you might be too hard on yourself. You might want to be perfect on everything that you do as a mom. You might think you're not being uh, the best um, person you can be for your family or for your husband. So today, uh, Sarah and Kate are here to tell us that it is okay to be human and it is okay to love yourself first. Now, Sarah, I'm going to start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got around to starting this movement on self-love. Yeah, um, sure. So it's always been something um, that I have been passionate about, um, probably a lot due to, you know, a, a lot of um, things that occurred in the past. So past trauma, um, and, and it's led me to a path of really having, a, you know, a look at myself. Um, when I had children, I think I lost a bit of who I was, and I lost my identi identity a little bit, um, and got to a point where I wondered... <laughs> What do I want and what am I passionate about? Um, <clears throat> and it sent me on this journey of um, personal development and really looking in, um, yeah, to me and who I am and who I was uh, because it was having an effect on my kids. Like I wasn't being my best self and I wasn't um, fully happy in, in everything I was doing and I just needed to discover why for me. Absolutely. And um, thank you so much for sharing that, that aspect. And Kate, you have dubbed yourself the self-love warrior. Tell us a little bit about how that came about. Okay. So um, Sarah just touched on, you know, the past, I suppose. And, you know, as you get older, as you go through life, um, well, for myself, I'm 40 years old now. And I guess I realized maybe around my mid twenties that, you know, I was making choices in my life that weren't for my highest good. And I was attempting, I was ha having relationships um, that weren't really going anywhere or that I didn't feel were quite successful. And I'd sort of, it was like this, I'm in a relationship and now, now I'm slumping and I'm in a relationship and now I'm slumping. And I, you know, I tried online dating and all kinds of things. And it sort of dawned on me one day, I remember I was doing the online dating thing and I thought instead of looking for Mr. Right, I'm going to start trying to become Miss Right. And that was a concept that kind of, sparked in my mind um you know i've done a lot of meditation and that sort of started maybe when i was about 21 years old but sort of growing up in a very non-religious family situation as well um i didn't really have we had beautiful family members but we didn't really have those um spiritual beliefs or concepts surrounding us in our um, in our youth and I think somewhere along the line I came to the belief maybe around seven or eight or nine years old that I was unlovable and I didn't work that out until years later and lots of therapy and things like that but you know it's um and it's not something that I really talk openly with a lot of people about you know because it is a self journey 
Um, and I think also, you know, we were touching earlier on tall poppy syndrome and it's kind of like in this culture, is it, is it okay if I sort of start raising up? Is it okay if I start recognizing my own inner light and start sharing that with the world is it okay do I have your permission you know do I have your permission no no I don't, you know I'm sort of I feel like I've been looking for permission um externally and for me that self-love is about you know giving myself that permission to let my own light shine absolutely that's actually beautiful and thank you so much for sharing that aspect um I mean a lot of things happen in life where we're growing up in an environment where um, I think around here they say kids are only meant to be seen, not heard. And not heard. yes, yep. and as, as children, you grow up with that, that voice and you automatically start thinking you are not important. Now, would that have been the case uh, for you as well there, Sarah, that um, you had to seek out uh, for permission in order to express yourself. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, my, my family was very loving. I mean, I've got a family where I've got supportive parents, and but we were raised in the culture of children are seen and not heard. And um, also that, especially as a female, um, if I was speaking about things that I uh, was passionate about and I loved, then I was too outspoken. So I needed to, you know, Calm, calm that down because it would be um um it yeah it just wouldn't be taken well by everyone and it was uh, i felt when i was younger that it was almost um i I'm, I'm, can't think of the right word not embarrassment but um where it it just wasn't seen well you know so um i started to not do that um and got to a point where i realized that i was just shutting out the things that i believed in uh, for a long, long time. Um, so starting to speak about about those things, it took, it did take a lot of courage, and it took, um, it probably impacted a lot of people in my family for a while because that wasn't that wasn't me. You know, I wasn't someone that did speak up about what I believed in. So when I started to get out there on social media and make lots of changes, um, there were plenty. There was plenty of backlash. That's for sure from people that just weren't used to seeing that. Um, and, um, you know, but, but that's what I love, um, about myself. You know, it's one thing I love about myself is that I can stand up and speak up for the things that, that I believe in and things that I love. Um, and that's something that I've grown to love more and more over time. It's taken, it's taken some time to know that it's okay to do that. Absolutely. Now, um, going back to Kate a little bit, you did touch upon uh, an aspect that, um, you know, the 21st century woman would not uh, agree with the aspect of permission, um, you know, that you needed permission to express yourself, you needed permission to do certain things. And within that context, you lost who you were uh, in, in, in all essence. Do you think that this is just the environment we live in or does the media also, um, you know, give that, you know, reprise to either teenagers or, you know, females about unrealistic, maybe body and beauty standards that you then want to seek approval from the next people to see if, um, you know, whoever you are presenting yourself is the right kind of person that's acceptable uh, in, in society. Most definitely. I think, you know, you, it's not something that, it's not something that sort of sits in, in your conscious mind a lot of the time. I remember being in high school and having, you know, teachers kind of present you with these questions and these ideas and, and it's like, oh yes, well, you know, we are seeing these kind of images and, you know, women's bodies being used for advertising and, um, you know, I guess having myself having my own body image issues um, throughout my entire life, you know, it's not something that you, I don't know, you just kind of find a way to manage it or to deal with it um, as opposed to going, hey, what's going on out there, you know, or as opposed to realising, oh, maybe because I'm being flooded with these images and these messages about this is what beauty looks like, um, you know, I've, 
I can honestly say that I've loathed, you know, I've loathed my body for many, 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 many years. And other people might look at my body and say, wow, you have an amazing body. You know, you are six foot tall and, you know, you, you're all in proportion. And, you know, this is the thing that I've come to realise, I guess, at the end of the day. And that is that, um, and it was through beginning to paint that I realised this. So I started just slapping paint all over canvas um, and creating, you know, music and things like that as well. But I remember looking one day at one of my pieces of artwork and, and I remember thinking, wow, that is so beautiful. And it came out from within me. And that's when it really started to dawn on me that beauty um, has nothing to do with this external shell that we, we've all been given. We've all been given one, you know, and we didn't choose it. It just, mm -hmm. it's what we were given. And we can present it in whatever, see, through my business as well, like I, I've got people transforming their bodies as well. So transforming, losing stacks and stacks of weight and really finding their identity again, particularly mums, because I think when they have children, they lose a bit of who they are um, and they lose that concept of, you know, um, they lose the body, you know, their body image they had. It's, it's changed. It's, it's different um, to what it was. Uh, and being able to learn to love that again and be okay with that um, takes a lot of time. Like comparison's a thief of joy and that's what I find social media does. Um, we compare to others and that takes away our joy and we're doing it on a daily basis. And I just think about my young girls now just seeing these images and um, uh, already, you know, I had a conversation with my daughters who are 11 um, last week about, um, do you have, you know, I talk about the voice that comes up in your head, which I call the imposter. And I said, do you have, you know, the, a voice that says bad things to you in your head? And they said, yes, we do. And I said, okay, tell me what it is. Um, and my daughter said, well, it says I'm ugly and it says I'm pretty dumb, you know, and I thought grade six girls, 11 years old, already this is sinking in. Um, you know, I just talked to them about this voice being an imposter in their mind and that um, it'll, it'll come up and, and about, you know, not believing that voice, uh, that it's not true, it's telling me things that aren't true and then, then to come and talk to me about it when that happens so that we can have a conversation around the fact that it's, there's no truth in what's coming up um, because I think, you know, as kids, we don't talk about um, this, you know, the, the different things we have coming up in our mind uh, that aren't our truth. They're not us. Um, and, yeah, I just think it's, it's just so important um, with what's coming into our brains that we look at daily and we, we scroll through and, um, you know, we just don't want to take away people's joy. Mm. And I think this is also why mindset, sorry, why mindset in, in teaching about mindset and, you know, um, and working with young people around these concepts in, in the education system is so incredibly important. Um, because like I said, I remember that, you know, that teacher in high school that sort of raised the, the idea with me and, and it sort of got me thinking at that time, but um, it is something that needs to be an ongoing conversation, especially with young kids, and that's boys and girls. Mm. Absolutely. So now that you both have brought it out that this is something that is, you know, probably starting off from an early age, and is it something that can then be controlled or people really do have to then go on on a self journey up until they figure it out on their own or is there something that maybe your mother is listening and, and and really you know relating to your 11 year old saying yeah this mm. is exactly what is happening to sally but how can i help sally now yeah um look i work um i i have a lots of different things going on that's why i pulled the mumpreneur title out um but i'm um also working uh at a coaching institute where um we do life coaching and um what I'm learning about is that people don't have ways to process emotions. Um, and I find that um, kids will have emotions come up. And I, I talk about this with my children um, and they don't know, they think that 
it's not normal because we're, there's a lot of shame around any emotions that come up. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the self-love, you know, goes back to we've constantly we've been shamed for feeling anything um, through our whole life. And we have to learn how to um, get past that shame, teach kids how to really process emotions and know that, you know, if sadness comes up, if anger comes up, that's normal. That's normal. It happens for everyone. It doesn't mean that you're depressed. It doesn't mean that you have mental health issues. It just means that you're a human being processing emotions. Um, and um, so uh, I can't even remember what the question was you asked now. I've gone off on a total tangent. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so for kids, the way, the way I look at it with kids is um, being able to teach them skills and, and tools, having tools and resources that we can take to them um, to be able to teach them ways they can deal with the things that come up and know that they're just like everyone else because we're all the same you know there's people out there um everywhere wearing so many masks and i think it's just about really taking off those masks and starting to be more transparent more vulnerable um and open to uh you know in the right context and in the right time and place sharing with supportive people that, that are going to help you um, on your journey and really reaching out to them and becoming part of a community. Absolutely. Uh, I think it was, uh, Sarah, you did mention uh, about the voice in the head and um, it really takes a strong person to stand up against that voice because considering, like you said, it's something that's got to be learned. A lot of people don't know whether it's their brain speaking or it's that imposter, as you call it, uh, speaking. Um, is there a way that you can teach people to differentiate um, the two when it's your normal brain, your feeling person, and the nyag, nyag, nyag that's just telling you you're not going to amount to anything? Um, for me, I mean, the way that I differentiate, you know, I've, I've been taught through lots of different teachers about this. Um, I... I do like um, Eckhart Tolle uh, he, in his book, The Power of Now, he talks about being the watcher of your thoughts. Um, so when a thought comes up that's negative, being able to look at that and say, uh, actually David Wood as well, he teaches, he's taught me that um, anything that negative that comes up in my mind is not me. <laughs> so, um, you know, as, as humans, we, we, you know, want to be joyful. And when we're calm and balanced and feeling happy, um, that's the way I differentiate. So if I've got fears coming up and I feel something internally um, that really um, sends my thoughts off, you know, on, on a bit of a tangent, uh, my question to myself now is what just triggered me? <laughs> What's just happened here? Um, and then I'm able to observe my thoughts and really watch them and see, um, you know, if something that's occurred has triggered that um, thought to come up. Um, and I just sit in it. I sit in it um, until, it, you know, until it dissipates or until it comes to me what, what it's really all about. And quite often I find it's something, you know, from the past that, that comes up and is, there's a trigger that I'm working through. And, um, yeah, that's my take on it. But what about you, Kate? Um, I would say for me, like I've done a lot, like I said, my meditation journey started a long time ago, maybe almost 20 years ago. And um, I actually worked with a group of kids today and, and they're really, a couple of them are really anti mindfulness, you know, they're like, Oh, this mindfulness stuff, you know? And I sort of try and talk to them to, I talk them through this meditation today and it was, just basically I want you to imagine there's an open door in front of you and you're looking at that open door across a field and as you're breathing in and out I want you to notice if any thoughts come into your mind because I mean nobody really trains us you know a lot of the time in this society today social media video games you know everyone's busy we've got a million things to do how is anybody conscious of you know what's going on in their head because we just go, 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 go. We're just doing without really thinking a lot of the time. And um, even though there are so many thoughts going through our head that we're not conscious of. So for me, meditation helps me to learn and to become more conscious of what I was thinking. Mm. And my, my artwork and my, um, the creative expression stuff really helped me to uh, process 
and work through what I what I'm feeling, what I'm truly feeling. You know, and a lot of the time, you know, I talk to kids about um, where do our thoughts even come from, you know, and we sort of, well, they come from the media, they come from our family, they come from cultural, you know, um, and sort of delving into this kind of stuff with young people because I think it is important that, you know, I wish that somebody had have taught me about these concepts when I was younger. You know, I went on, a, we, well, we both, all of us, we go on our journeys, you know, and I think sometimes I think, hmm, if only somebody had taught me about self-love when I was, you know, and sometimes I do um, this beautiful meditation where I guide children to their heart space. So it's just sort of a breathing exercise, but I guide them to their heart space and I, I tell them that there's a little voice inside, it's whispering, it's, got, it's going to tell you, it's going to give you a message today and when you hear that message, if you hear something, I'd really like you to write it down on a piece of paper. And honestly, 100% of the time, it is, I am brave, I am strong, I am kind, I am helpful, I am, at, you know, and it's, it never fails. And I think that voice is soft, that voice is quiet because society says, shush it up. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Now, if you're watching this show right now, I just want to let you know that you're very special. There's no other person in this world that's just like you. You deserve to be loved and you deserve to put yourself first. Like what these girls are saying, um, you know, sometimes some people, you know, have that misconception of do I like myself or do you absolutely love yourself? And do you accept yourself for who you are? Um, and there's a whole big world out there if you actually put yourself, your authentic self first um, before, you know, um, anything else. Now, all said and done, this is something that other people would just put in the too nice basket and pretty much forget. Do you have any sort of um, tips on how people can actually start noticing when they've stopped loving themselves or when they've neglected themselves. Um, and as much as I can tell you a story, I was telling you about my teenager and uh, my wife came running into the office the other day. She was really excited. She's like, you know what, today I can actually relax. I've managed to get one of my legs shaved because um, you know, <laughs> my little girl was sleeping throughout the day. So I, I didn't understand it up until that time but she really was proud of that achievement in her life now I can you imagine if she was doing grander and greater things that she can actually accept and 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 start loving herself more uh in, in terms of that so a lot of people are confused when it comes to that sort of aspect now how can you teach people um or to notice when they're actually loving themselves or when they are um you know not doing themselves a, a service Mm, that's funny your, your story about that because um, what I think hap happens quite often, particularly with women, I know I found it a lot when I became a mother, is um, we're actually our own worst enemy with each other sometimes. Mm. Like there's a lot of judgment on each other with um, even the small things like do I go back to work? Do I stay home with my kids? Do I breastfeed? Do I bottle feed? Do I all of these things um, which then can make us look um, at issues, like for example, you know, shaving one leg, that is an achievement. I mean, when I had twins, it was like, wow, getting out of my pajamas was like the biggest thing all day. And I think we only know what we know at the time. So being kinder to each other, you know, is so huge because um, everyone is in their own different situation and everyone can handle you know, certain things at certain times. Um, and um, yeah, I think being, le you know, less judgment, less gossip. You know, I, I um, <clears throat> did a study, uh, uh, like found some research on gossip and it's like women gossip something like um, 15 hours a week or something, something ridiculous <laughs> like that. And um, I remember thinking, wow, we need to do something else. Um, but um, I think um, what, what women, particularly like, you know, my focus a lot is on women. Yes, um, I know men need this as well, but being able to come together and, <laughs> and, um, and be supportive of each other is a big thing, I feel. Um, I, for me, like how I discovered that I needed more self-love was I just, 
I was looking externally for happiness and looking for people to fill me up and um, fill my cup when really I needed to do it myself. And for me, it's things like exercise, um, sleep. Uh, you know, sleep is so under... <laughs> like when you're sleep deprived home with children, um, it's very, very hard to feel like you want to pour love into yourself because you're just so tired all the time. Um, you know, making time for yourself, making time for yourself and your partner together, you know, that's something that I failed to do when I wasn't loving me. I didn't make time for anyone. Um, so um, really knowing that it's okay to spend some time by yourself, whether it be, you know, take a bath, read a book, simple things um, that really fill us up, making sure we're eating really well, you know, and nurturing and nourishing our bodies. Um, that's, I think this, they seem small, but when you start there with those things, um, just watch the shift. Just watch the shift happen. Mm, that, that would be my first initial tips. <laughs> now, what, what does the self warrior have to uh, add to this? You did mention um, your escape in music and art. Um, could that be something that people can explore? You know, like the, the one thing that I think uh, yeah. Sarah touched on a lot was, you know, the influence of the media. If we can detach ourselves from at least looking or being surgically attached to a screen and really expressing ourselves in other modalities, could that be something that you can, um, you know, advise somebody to, to, to start engaging in? A million percent. I mean, absolutely. Any, anything that is something that you are creating, because I do believe that we were born not to uh, consume as we, uh, so, as we're all doing uh, so frequently, but to actually create something. Because, yes, we, I believe we're all one and I believe we're all connected, uh, but I also believe in the, the idea that we're all unique individuals and we've all come here with our own unique gifts to share. And, um, you know, to sit... I mean, why do we learn how to write? Why do we learn how to write in school if we don't do it? You know, um, why did I stop painting after grade six or year nine or whatever it was? You know, somebody handed me a canvas once as an adult and I did a few little ch -ch -ch and I was like, wow, you know, now I've got like 50 painted canvases sitting in my garage. I'm thinking, what am I going to do with all these? But, um, you know, singing and dancing and things that bring you into the moment, you know, and the, and the now, um, People laugh because my mum and dad just recently returned from Gold Coast and my mum stayed one night and then dad was going to join and, and she said, oh, your father won't want to stay here. There's no television here. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I thought, and, and people are going, well, what do you do if you don't have a television, you know? And I'm like, well, I do a lot of thinking and I do a lot of singing and, you know, I don't know. I take baths. Um. There's a good tip. Turn the TV off. Um, I think um, the reality TV shows are another um, problem with body image, though. You know, I, I, the, there's a show on um, uh, some sort of dating and they're all dating on this, almost like this island or something. And um, Stop it. That is the worst. <laughs> my son had it on. And I thought, what is he learning, you know, by watching this? Um, what about that show where there's one guy and like a hundred women trying to, trying to get him, mm, you know, it's like, yeah. is this the story of my life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this is where, this is where a lot of the self doubt comes in because we're watching this and yeah. And really, um, comparing ourselves, like I was saying before to, to other people and, um, it's not great. I went on a singing, I've, I've started, um, doing some singing as well. And, um, yeah. And I think finding those parts, like Kate said, in you that are creative, that maybe um, out of fear, you know, you haven't done before, but just doing it for fun. Um, having more fun, absolutely, is, is a huge one as well. Because Laughing. I think, um, yeah, it's just like, we're so serious all the time. And yeah, where's the childlike play for fun, you know, that we used to have when we were kids. So bringing that back into our lives as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, you know, somebody would have been watching the show right now and, you know, the self-love warrior has just given us all these tips and the mom preneur has, um, you know, elaborated to us that self-love is really, really important. Um, and they're thinking to themselves, I want to get in touch with these girls and find out, um, you know, you know, how I can express myself a little bit more. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you? Yeah, so look, uh, at the moment they can um, get in contact through um, my Facebook page um, and, um, you know, we're going to be running some workshops and events that people can come along to um, so that they can come and be a part and learn what we're um, all about and see if it's a great fit for them. So, you know, we, we want to help people um, find who it is they want to be. We want to help them turn fear, you know, go from fear into love. Um, fears are, are always going to be there, but um, let's work out how we can work through those um, and really, really dive in deep to how we can fill ourselves up. Um, so, yeah, get in touch and um, we'd love to, to have a chat about what it is they're looking for. Absolutely. I can't thank you girls enough for your time. But then just one last thing. I mean, um, in as much as... Um, somebody would have been saying, okay, that's well and truly good. Um, you know, you, you guys have um, maybe taken out all my limiting beliefs and you have explained to me that it's okay to love myself, but I can't be like, you know, like you girls, like you were saying, uh, Kate, earlier on, you're six foot tall, you've got this luscious body and we've got uh, hey, Sarah here. <laughs> 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 we've got Sarah here who's blonde and, you know, just good looking and everything else like that. Some people would never find themselves accepting and acknowledging who they have become or what they are. What is your sort of go-to advice? I'll give you each a turn to just give them one last piece of advice before we uh, wind down the show. I'll start off with um, Sarah, if you can. Um, so my take on an advice on that is something that I've learnt is that we all present ourselves externally however we choose. Um, so, um, you know, we're all born in a certain way and we present how we like. You know, for me, um, I present in a way where, you know, I like makeup, I wear certain clothes, whatever. That's just the way I present myself. It has nothing to do with who I am as a person. Um, and um, that's where I'd want to be able to talk to people about um, really everything comes back to here. I mean, what we look like, it doesn't matter if we're not a person that has, doesn't have compassion and empathy for other people um, who doesn't, um, you know, who, who isn't kind to people. Uh, I just, I think we have to learn that appearance is just the external part that we express to the world. Um, everyone chooses to do it in whatever way they like. Uh, they, and they're, they're entitled to it. You know, they can, they can present and, um, you know, I just really want judgment to stop in that way. Because even, to be honest, like even when I see an attractive girl on social media now and I, I see people mocking them because of the way they're posing. So it goes both ways. Um, I find that any form of mocking of anyone is just not necessary. So um, for me, yeah, it's all about just coming, again, coming back into who am I as a person. Um, and I'll, I'll choose to present myself in whatever way I do. And that, does, that doesn't determine whether or not I'm um, a person that's out there that's respectful to others and has compassion and empathy and, um, and gives love and kindness to other people. So, yeah, that's just the way I would think about it. Absolutely. And what would um, the self-love warrior say, say to that as well? Well, I agree. I agree with what Sarah said. And, um, and like I said, you know, I've wasted um, a long time inspecting every tiny blip and blemish and, you know, and, and lo like on my skin and my body and loathing, loathing myself. And it wasn't until I truly looked within and I saw the beauty. So for me, it's like, if you want to, if you want to learn how to love yourself, have a look into your own eyes really, really deeply and tell yourself, I love you. You're amazing. You are awesome. And do it a million times. I'm enough. I'm worthy. And, you know, 
give yourself these positive messages. And then as Sarah was talking about, go out and give those messages of love and kindness and gentleness to other people and, um, and just see how quickly your world changes because, you know, like we were talking about before, it really all does start in the mind and, um, and all these messages that we've received from society throughout our lives about, you know, all kinds of things um, which are not real. <laughs> They're not actually real. And the only thing I think that really exists is, is love. And um, all that fear-based stuff is not real. So um, I think, too, for people that um, are saying we can't have what they have or do what they have, that, you know, that's what you're saying, um, you know, maybe I can't do what she does or can't look like she does or whatever, um, it's important for them to know that we all have the same thoughts. <laughs> so no matter how we're presented, we've all got this stuff going on in our head. So people need to know they're not alone um, in that journey. We're all in this we're together. There. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. And I really want you to introduce you to the most important person right now. And that person is you. You deserve to be loved and you more than anything else by yourself and those that are around you. So when you practice self-love, I know it can be challenging. It's not easy. Um, it might just sound like a foreign concept, but try it just one day and you can start living and having a happier existence. Now, now the self-loving warrior and the mom and mompreneur have just given us permission to start loving ourselves and so that we can go out and present um, the best versions of ourselves to those that we love. Thank you so much, ladies, for your time today and the value that you've shown on the show and the laughs that all happen in between the, the, the episode as well. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so thank much you. for having thank us. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs>